All right, Leanne, now let's talk about the Families First Tax Credit Act. Okay, so, and I've said this wrong about a dozen times, so I'm going to read it. It's the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. We're just going to call it FFCRA for now, or Families First. This is all employers under 100 employees are subject to this act. And this is a big change for most of us because we're not used to being subject to family medical leave. And this makes us fundamentally until the end of the year subject to family medical leave if it's related to coronavirus. Employers who have less than 50 employees can request a release from this act if it will threaten the viability of their, their business. We don't know how they request it. We don't know who they ask for it from, but they can. But I think for a lot of businesses, when they understand this, they may figure out they can actually do this and not threaten the viability of the company. It was a little terrifying when it first came out, but we've gotten some more clarification. So this is fundamentally, if you have an employee who is experiencing a coronavirus quarantine, self-quarantine, they have symptoms or a diagnosis, then your business under this act is required to pay their leave time up to two weeks, a maximum of 80 hours at 100% of their normal pay, unless they make more than $511 a day. If they make more than that, you only pay $511, but most of our um, employees are going to be less than that. So you have to pay their leave time up to 80 hours for two weeks at 100% of their normal pay. If they are home taking care of a person who's sick, you have to pay the same amount of time, but you get to pay two thirds of their normal amount. If they're at home taking care of a child because the school is closed, the daycare is closed, or their child care provider is not available, you have to pay their leave time at two thirds of their pay, but it's capped at $200 a day. That's the difference. If you're paying them to stay home taking care of themselves or someone else sick, it's capped at 511. Um, if you are paying them to take care of a child, it's capped at $200 a day. Still, most of our employers, that would be, um, for most of their employees, that would be their full pay rate, and, but you would pay it at two-thirds. Here's what, That was the terrifying part for most of us. We thought, there's no way. I can't do that. I don't have the cash flow. Here's the good news. Employers will receive 100% reimbursement for leave paid pursuant to this act. So if you pay somebody this, you get a 100% reimbursement. The way that you get it is through a payroll tax offset. And that was equally terrifying because we thought it'll take us forever because we were hearing it only with social security taxes that applied to it. The most recent guidance says it's the same way as the ERC. You hold back anything you would pay as a federal tax deposit. That includes income withholding, both sides of social security, both sides of Medicare. You hold that back until you've paid what you owed yourself for these wages. If it's more than what you have, you can request a credit. When that credit is applied, it's refundable, and so that check can be written back to you. So that, you know, worst case scenario, you're talking about you're holding back every month, and then at the end of the quarter, you can request that credit. You can even pre-request the credit based on your estimates because you know how long people are going to be out. So that's kind of the better news about FFCRA.